everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And today we are doing one of our bonus episodes. We are talking about the hammer. <laughs> it's on Lifetime channel. Uh, they had a new, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, legal dramedy, I guess. Kind of both. Anyway, with uh, the great Reba McIntyre uh, called The Hammer. Uh, it was a movie just this last weekend. And uh, I'm really looking forward to talking about it. Uh, and I am film critic Rachel Wagner and Terry's here. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? I'm good. Good. Did you have a good holidays? Uh, oh, they were exhausting, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I still feel like I'm in recovery mode. <laughs> oh, I've... <laughs> Ooh, they were exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how many, uh, did you keep track of how many, uh, movies you watched? I did. And it was 99. Nice. I usually watch over a hundred, but I couldn't do it this year. I had so much on my plate. I didn't have enough yeah. time. That's still a lot. It is a lot. And I started way early in October. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Same. <laughs> well, yeah. Like, I can't. I don't know why I do this to myself, but I do it every year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we really, we start preparing for the podcast in, in September, you know, start thinking about who we want as guests. And I mean, and luckily Hallmark wasn't so late in getting their slate uh, no. as they were the year before. New management. So yes, <laughs> new management got that tight. Yeah. I mean, overall, do you think it was a pretty good uh, Christmas season? Do you think, uh, how did you feel? I think I did happen to watch all of Hallmark's slate mm -hmm. and I thought it was pretty good, better than it has been in a couple of years, like solid overall. There were one or two, mm -hmm. maybe three that I was puzzled at, but other than that, <laughs> I was yeah. Good. For the most part, I was really pleased uh, with Hallmark's slate. Uh, I feel like all of the uh, all of the brands started really strong and then kind of petered out. And maybe part of that is me, uh, you know, losing interest. But usually, most years, I feel like some of the best movies are the that last weekend or the last ones. Yeah, yeah. Because you know what it is year. when when all the networks start airing their stuff in in November. Uh -huh. It seems to me like how many save the whatevers or uh -huh. or planning a party stories can you watch? They start all blending together. When <laughs> well, you watch as many as we do, yeah. you can't keep track of it. <laughs> well, I mean, this year, uh, the, um, the Hanukkah on Rye was the last one and it was my oh, favorite. It was, adorable. Of the whole. it was so good. But, but there were ones like the holiday dating guide on Lifetime, which... I hated that. <laughs> I, I didn't. I quit the lifetime. I was like, I can't fit this in. Goodbye. Yeah, lifetime. And they started yeah. so strong. That first like two weekends of lifetimes were so Yeah, good. I caught those, but then I had to give it in. And then I watched <laughs> their one thriller. They did one thriller. Oh, I heard and that. I was yeah. Like, I didn't yeah. See I was that. like, all right, this is because this is lifetime's brand. They're women in peril. Yeah. Who overcome. It was like, I wish you a murder Christmas or something like that. Yeah. Or I think it was, um, gosh, what was the name of it? It's, it, you know, it's beginning to look a lot like murder. Yeah. It was murder. And it was, and murder <laughs> yeah. Or, or something like that. It was dreadful. Uh oh. I thought, you know, it could have been a horror movie because there were Christmas gnomes everywhere, uh -huh. but it was, it was dreadful. I found it dreadful. Oh, there was no suspense. Bad. This lady just like, she's addicted to true crime and then proceeded to say everyone was guilty of killing her aunt that she never spoke to in like 10 years or whatever. It was uh -huh. dreadful. Oh, that's dreadful. Bad. Well, what's interesting about this movie, The Hammer, is that uh, it did better. It had better ratings, like by a lot than anything yeah, that, I was reading that. that Lifetime did during Christmas. Uh, I don't think I'm that not they surprised had, though. I don't think that they had anything over 1 million. No. Uh, they, and this got 1.5. Uh, so that was really good ratings for them. Yeah, I'm not surprised because it's Reba yeah. and I, I think they have to rethink their, their Christmas strategy. Cause a lot yeah. of those are acquisitions and they're not very good yeah. and people don't tune in for lifetime for that anymore. 
Yeah. They, well, I, really, like I said, I felt like they started super strong. I loved yeah. Wilson, well, Wilson they always Christmas. Do, yeah. I loved Ranger Games Homecoming. Uh, Mary Texmas, I love. Oh, those were good. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, it, 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 it definitely petered out. Yeah. Uh, that's I, for sure. I think they need to do what Ion did and just go for some thrillers. Yeah. Some that Christmas was thrillers. smart. I mean, I, I, those were were very enjoyable all four of those ion movies were a lot of fun and i kind of like that that's that that was they've kind of picked a niche yeah uh, yeah because they were they were good uh but but yeah so this one did very well and i and i think it's you know the the reba hive is strong people love yes it is (laughs) i love reba everybody loves Reba I mean she seems like such a nice person it's such a likable presence on screen totally yeah yeah did you watch her show were you I did I did really like her show it was great to see uh Melissa Peterman and her together um and you know she was so funny in that and I think Reba has grown as an actress too since that since her show yeah and she's just become better because yeah, i, I remember some of her early tv movies you know and it was drama centric <laughs> she's waking up from a comas you know yeah. and all that stuff so. well and she's been in like she was in tremors yes Did you ever see the uh, tremors i think so uh, yeah i yeah. just watched one of them right i've only seen one yeah. they had a um last year they had a uh a cinemark they had a mystery movie where you'd you knew all you knew and they i think they're still doing these uh but i've only been to one but they all you knew was the rating and the genre of the movie (laughs) oh that's fun yeah and you went it was really fun and uh Mm -hmm. it was tremors and i'd never seen it before so that was that was fun and i think i've only ever watched the first movie Mm -hmm. and that was huge when i was a kid and i know that they have continuity and it's made by the same person so yeah it's amazing I've only seen it, it the first one as well, but, yeah. uh, but yeah, so this one, uh, and I, when I first, cause they, they were promoting this like crazy oh, and yeah. I thought it was a show. I thought it was a series. I didn't realize that it was just a movie and I don't know if it feels like a pilot to a it show. Did. It really did feel like a pilot. So but, I would be surprised with how well it did that at the very least, we don't get a bunch of movies. I would say movies are probably a better go because when was the last time Lifetime had like a show outside of their reality shows? Yeah, I was going to say they have the reality shows. It's been a shows. while. Yeah, I think doing the movies is probably the safe bet because I thought there's like six different stories running around here at the same time. It felt like episodes all crammed yeah. into the movie. It really felt like a pilot. You're Absolutely. getting to know all these different characters in the town, and and I I uh, I would be surprised if they don't do something with it at, at the very least. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. When was the last series on Army Wives? You might be right. I mean, dropped a diva was on a uh, Lifetime before that. No, yeah, but that's I think that's so. a while. That's a while ago. Um, yeah, you might be right. That could the Army Wives was be, a yeah. long time ago. Um, a show I only watched like half the season of too. Oh, really? I liked yeah, I liked Army mm. Wives. I liked Army Wives. A lot of uh, a lot of Hall Stars on. on oh, absolutely. Army Wives. Aaron and Craig. I was Aaron, on it. Yeah, and Catherine Bell, obviously. Um, but uh, but anyway, so the little summary of this is. Kim Wheeler, an attorney who was appointed as a judge for Nevada's fifth district after the former judge's death, as the investigation into the death intensifies, Kim's sister, who runs the local brothel, becomes the prime suspect. So overall, I guess, what did you think of this movie? It was a lot grittier than I thought it should have been. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot going on and the tone was all over the place. But it was very entertaining, and Reba was great, and the the supporting cast was great too. I, it was fun to watch for me. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, uh, this is directed by Jeff Beasley, who has done a ton of Hallmark movies, uh, some of our favorites. He did uh, Just One Kiss, uh, Kiss Before Christmas, uh, and uh, Project Christmas Wish, uh, a lot of yeah. favorites. Uh, and I, I think that that, yeah, they did combine some pretty dark uh dark subject matter with oh yeah i was surprised at that yes i thought um, it was going to be just a fun judge show yeah with uh with the humor and the sass it, this yeah. th- this movie was high on the sass, sass. <laughs> absolutely a lot of sass <laughs> uh, and overall i enjoyed it too i do feel like yeah it was a little messy but i feel like that's often the case with pilots you know because they're just yeah. sort of testing out trying to figure out what uh show they're they're gonna make and uh and so I'll, oftentimes you watch a pilot and it feels like a different show than the rest of the show yeah and sometimes even the like first season of a show I feel like it's rocky is, yeah is, yeah is really different than you know the whether it's like the office or the simpsons or a lot of popular shows uh the first season is like really different sure i mean mm-hmm. i think about like once upon a time that was like a procedural almost mm-hmm. each for the season one each episode was like a case that she had to like break yeah and then come season two it's just one like they split the seasons in half with a continuous story yeah yeah and so it's set in nevada and but it was filmed did you notice that uh oh that yeah it was, it was all well it was all, filmed, calls, in, it was all yeah. filmed in canada but uh also at the when calls the heart set yeah. was used oh i recognized it. it right away it looks yeah. so run down too it looks <laughs> kind of newish on when calls the heart uh-huh. and here it looked so run down <laughs> yeah I, I didn't notice it that much I, I, but i really noticed it in like following the behind the scenes uh, clips yeah. and stuff like that that they were sharing i'm like oh that's Hope valley <laughs> yeah it's like I could tell it was the saloon was the courthouse Mm -hmm. and the bar and they used like um now I can't remember anybody's name on that show (laughs) and they used the the, oh uh, on on one calls the heart on one calls the heart yeah now I can't remember I'm spaced uh like Kevin (laughs) McGarry's office Jack Wagner's office yeah that's it yeah yeah. I completely spaced (laughs) it's my love-hate relationship with that show Mm -hmm. I understand (laughs) (laughs) We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode, and that is the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. Open it with Melissa Peterman finding the dead judge. And I don't know if they really state outright, like they do in the summary, that she runs the brothel. It's all sort of like, it's talked about. And I forget, did they have a name for her business? Yeah, no, I can't remember. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but it's it's a little bit more implied then like i don't know then they kind of dance around it a little bit yeah because she did say hey girls we're not working for free here or something like that at the beginning yeah so i, I kind of figured i was like oh she's the head honcho there she, she's the madam so to speak mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well and in in nevada that things like that's are legal. legal so yeah. it's a little bit different but um uh but anyway and they 
Uh, and so we start out with her finding this, this body, and then we get introduced to Reba, uh, through this traffic stop. She's going 90, uh, and she tells the, the sheriff, if I ever hear you pulled your weapon on a traffic stop, you and I will have a problem. Which... That was so silly, but I laughed at it. It was so but, silly. I was, well, I think this it's guy's kind of never seen any action obviously yeah i mean <laughs> it was an effective way of introducing you to the character though oh yeah you know she doesn't she's a judge but she doesn't care about the rules she's going 90 you know she uh it, it, it just you immediately knew who this character is absolutely mm-hmm. um and so we also find out that her that the assistant uh that she uh, or he or she left because of the changing situation uh, that uh, that she um, she didn't want to work for a woman. Evidently, a woman. Yeah, and uh, throw that in too. <laughs> yeah, and then this introductory scene, the first scene in court, was ridiculous. Like ridiculous. there is there is uh, this show is not going to win any points for legal realism. <laughs> no. There's but no you, know, you don't watch court tv for realism though no you know on on you know court shows for that yeah she she literally hits the defendant hits. with her gavel well now we know the name of the movie why that's for. yeah uh, yeah oh, there's man. a on on youtube there's a a guy legal legal eagles i think or something like that anyway he 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 watches courtroom he's a lawyer he watches courtroom shows and gives them a grade for legal realism <laughs> and uh, this would be a very bad grade <laughs> i'm sure but i did love um maddie ficino uh-huh yeah i think that's how you pronounce As the it. da yeah just inhaling and i was like you cannot inhale your inhaler like that in real life <laughs> pass out <laughs> yeah that's true yeah you you really as someone who has asthma myself you you oh, really know, you only too. should have one puff and that's yeah you'd be it. fine with one puff. Yeah. <laughs> but i get it it's the joke it's he's nervous yeah 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 and he was just a lot of a, uh, hallmark regulars in this movie he's too. always so good i love him he is he is yeah he was uh what was it was he in he's in a bunch but it was i think he was in was he in the holiday sitter He's in yes, one he of, was the yeah. uh he was the brother i think yeah yeah in the he's, holiday sitter he's so good but um <clears throat> and so her uh her uh gaveling <laughs> this guy <laughs> goes viral <laughs> she literally punches him <laughs> gavel punches him <laughs> oh, and, man. uh we also find out that she is living out of her truck uh, not really because she has to, but because she likes it. Yeah. And I knew I was like, there's, there's going to be some heavy stuff. The meaning sure. of this later on. I knew right yeah. away. Yeah. Okay. And she's like, uh, the one, the, the officer says, oh, I, I don't eat meat. And she says, it's, it's sausage. It's not meat. Sausage. <laughs> that is something that my people would say, um, <laughs> yeah. you don't eat meat. Yeah. Sausage isn't meat chicken is in me fish is in me you know mm-hmm. only steak is me only the cow yeah. is me <laughs> so they it's kind of fun not only is melissa peterman uh in this playing uh reba's sister but also you have rex lynn uh playing bart uh who is reba's boyfriend yeah this has to be um like a thing for them now because aren't they in big sky together as well that show like on abc yeah they're in that too and i was like is this part of their thing now they get to work <laughs> together all the time oh i don't know you i've know? never that, what show is that big sky that's big sky i think it's called big sky it was a big river oh my gosh now i don't know it's a show on abc i've never seen it it's a pro- procedural oh, yeah big sky big, yeah i haven't even heard of that I wonder if that's why they didn't make a series of this uh, because she's on some other show. Maybe. I mean, it's only going to be this season because I, I believe the premise is each season is a story or each half a season is a story. 
I've never seen it, but I think that's the premise. Hmm. So, but I did find it funny because they're, you know, presenting together, they're going, and I was like, well, it, you know, enjoy your time together, whatever yeah. works for you. <laughs> yeah, I guess why not? <laughs> hey, man. I mean, he was good. He worked. Yeah, he's good. He's good. I think he did did the job uh, that was needed. So it's kind of fun. So he plays this man, Bart, whose son uh, is up for a uh, murder charge. And uh, and his ex-wife, right? Yes, is that kind of reminded me of the real life case um the effluenza case where the boy he was drunk and he killed a bunch of his friends with his car and then he was sentenced to a ridiculous amount of time like practically no time in jail and his mother fled with him to like Mm -hmm. Cancun and that's what it reminded me immediately Mm -hmm. I was like oh this happened a couple of years ago something like this obviously they like went over the top yeah Um, so well then fleeing with your son to cancun is also over the top but yeah when you're rich (laughs) (laughs) um and so then we have this guy hank uh and he doesn't think that a woman has what it takes and that's fighting words for uh reba oh yeah of course was he the a former sheriff or was he a judge he was i think of now i can't remember judge. i think he was a judge or something yeah yeah definitely undeveloped in that part like there's mm-hmm. totally more left to that story to tell yeah well and so they have her doing the drug 12-step program thing uh where uh if people are going to go to uh they're going to go to you know prison or if they're going to get treatment or whatever and there's this woman, Angel Brown, and she says she's clean, but uh, she tested for meth. And uh, and so first she she sends her to prison. And uh, uh, but there's something about it that she's wondering about. <laughs> it doesn't all sit right with her. <laughs> and, I knew there was going to be a twist. I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. The thing I was the most surprised about as far as the dark elements is I was surprised that they made her dad such a villain, like that. Yeah. That, you know, she was so abused and like, I feel like usually characters like that have like passed away or something like that, like having her dad there and like the fact that she was like tortured and abused like so badly that was that was intense i'm like you're are you supposed to are you supposed to like because sometimes i thought they were trying to play him off as a sort of lovable old man but then like right. he did these horrible things i know i found that actually the most realistic part of the movie mm. because um well okay i grew up in a dysfunctional home yeah and not to this extent but um yeah you do end up when your parent has done mean things to you uh, or has a, cause he definitely was an alcoholic as well or had a problem. You do end up still being there and you have these emotions. Like in one hand, you're like, he deserves that, you know, it's karma. And the other hand, it's like, he's your dad. I'm still going to be there. So I found that the most realistic, yeah. but they did go like super dark with that. Really dark. Yeah, I did raise my eyebrow on one thing, though, because um, Melissa um, Peterman, she was like, I'm sorry I left you alone there, Reba, with him. And I was like, are they making her the oldest sister? I kind of raised my eyebrow on that. And I was like, um, okay. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, they made her the older sister. mm -hmm. Well, and she's been she's been taking care of the dad but she's also like a heavy alcoholic absolutely yeah and that kind of makes sense with the you know yeah dysfunctional upbringing so we're gonna see i think if we get more uh we're gonna i think see more on that of her trying to get into recovery and 
the dad has really bad dementia and uh, so it's just bringing up there she she finds uh, in the attic she finds the moon that she drew when she was man that was tough being tortured as a kid like brutal <laughs> it was brutal there's so much silly happening in this movie yeah and this was so serious but i thought it was handled well though it wasn't too over the top <laughs> i thought there was restraint in it you know mm-hmm. and so i was like the most well part like the most believable part i think of the story yeah. overall welcome to the pilot podcast my name is bj and my name is me too and we promise this promo is worth it so please don't skip ahead We're two judgy friends who put our judgmental skills to work for you. We review the pilot episodes of new and popular shows and shows that our listeners request to answer your question, should I watch this? Look, a lot of us are spending a lot more time at home, and yes, we should be reading and trying new projects and enriching ourselves, but does anything beat binging a great show? Let us take the guesswork out of deciding what your next show will be. Tune in to The Pilot Podcast at thepilotpodcast.com. She gets these threatening phone calls uh, coming in and uh, they're telling her to, you know, she's, she's not, uh, she's not supposed to make the rulings. And they're like, so there's this um, kid, uh, what was his name? Dirk? Was his name Dirk? Or I forget Bart's kid. But anyway, so. she's getting all these. I have to these... look that up. I, I can't remember. Yeah, she keeps getting these. <laughs> But we know it's not Bart because Bart has an alibi right. for the night of the the murder of the judge. Um, but um, uh, she gets this sealed juvenile record, Leo Stevenson, and uh, and then she gets a warning: watch out, watch out uh, for him. If I were you, um, the uh, for the I think it was hank were you suspect of the um what's his name um vance were you suspect of him or did you think it was just the, the friendly friendly uh bartender at first i thought he was a friendly bartender but once she had that argument with the ex-wife i started going hmm he might be covering up for her mm-hmm. yeah but i didn't think it would go to that extent so yeah so they the, they kept that um they kept those red herrings good for when they remembered this storyline because you know they had so much going on mm-hmm. so we have this lady eileen uh who uh who was um in the drug um center or in the drug program um and that there is this uh that basically she was told by this leo guy that if she had sex with him he would make her sentencing right and uh and so but she doesn't want to testify she's scared uh that uh you know she'll be in danger and her you know family uh but you know, Reba talks to her and uh, eventually convinces her to testify. Yeah. I mean, what a trash human being he was. Mm -hmm. But when that all went down, I was like, there's no way he would have thrown this out of court. You can't just, I'm, you know, he shows up for surprise (laughs) indictment on himself. Right. (laughs) Oh my gosh. That's when this movie was starting to get like super heavy. I was like, oh, there's so many trash people in here. Yeah. And that, that, the uh um and that leo would watch uh a- like angel when she would give her sample oh my like gosh. super creepy that super is creepy terrible guy yeah but it does happen in real life though mm-hmm. so, um so sad, then sadly yeah so she gets her mama's gun <laughs> <laughs> gets her mama's gun and uh and then uh then chris Melissa Peterman, her sister gets arrested uh, because she's the one that found Judge Brewer originally at the beginning of the movie, and so they they think that uh, that she did it, but of course we all know she didn't. No. Uh, but uh, but what do you think about Melissa Peterman in this movie? Did you think she did a good job? 
I thought she was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, she's pretty good. I mean, she's playing, she's not funny in this. Not really. Mm -hmm. She's being a tad bit more serious, but I thought she brought it. Yeah. And they I didn't believe nice she was the older sister, but I bought, I bought the seri mm -hmm. seriousness of it. And they yeah. do have great chemistry together. Yeah. It felt, I believe them as, uh, yeah. As, as sisters. I think they did a good job. Yeah, they do. They did a good job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And basically like Matty Finocchio, his, his argument is that Chris deals drugs. The judge had drugs. So, and so that's the, <laughs> there's no evidence. I know they need no it for plot. I know they, you know, I mean, aside from the fact that she found him, there isn't yeah, really I, any evidence. I mean, you have to, you can't, you know, take any of this like seriously, like in real life, but I know they needed it for a plot, but I was like, this is so thin, you know, yeah. they've got her in and they had her being like, nobody wears those kind of jumpsuits anymore in jail, like the striped black and white. Well, especially in, in court. I know. It was so I mean, I funny. guess she tells her that, like, you need to wear the, something nice. Yeah, I was laughing. Yeah. So I was just, it was so funny. That visual of her in a striped suit. Yeah. <laughs> in an old timey jail, too. And I was like, I think that's intentional. But it was, it was very <laughs> funny. Yeah, so that's when we get this whole thing with Eileen. And, uh, and then uh, Stevenson is arrested. And, uh, and Angel is given a new chance, a new test and everyone's clapping. Uh, and that's something that would never happen in a court oh, no. ever. You would never have no. the, the <laughs> clapping. That is actually a pet peeve of mine in <laughs> movies or TV shows. Yeah. When people start clapping, like somebody kisses or somebody's reunited yeah. <laughs> or something good like this happens where like the scumbag, yeah. the scumbag is taken. I can't because there's yeah. no, I, I remember the fault. I remember watching the fault in their eyes. I think uh -huh. the, what, that's the one where she has cancer. Right. And Palmer they kiss. Stars. Yeah. yeah, that's it. And they kiss like in, in, um, Amsterdam in the attic. Yeah. And Frank's attic and they're kissing. Oh, Everybody yeah. claps. I got up and I walked out. I was like, I can't. <laughs> I was like, they cannot clap in Anne Frank's attic. <laughs> and I just I, walked I, right out. It's funny you mention that because one of my first, like, very unpopular opinions when I was writing, started writing reviews was I did not like that movie. Oh, um, no. It was not for me. <laughs> I was like, I couldn't Some believe it. That. I was, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that's like, you. I couldn't. I was like, they went a step too far here. And it's, I yeah. always, ugh, it takes me to a dark place. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah and then i was surprised that they went with the dead cat threat that was intense <laughs> she gets her her father's cat sent to her dead in the mail and uh and then it says home is where the heart is <laughs> yeah it's like whoa and as a cat lover myself i yeah. was like oh no that was Ted's and, and, uh, so then we have, uh, supposedly, uh, Mrs. Brewer, the wife of the judge has a love letter from Chris to the judge, but they figure out pretty quickly that the assistant lady, I forget her name, uh, that she wrote the letter. And then one a played lot of, by Jill Morrison. Yes. And yeah. it says a lot of people didn't like Judge Brewer. If someone didn't want you, someone didn't want you killed, you weren't. He because he said, if someone didn't want you killed, you weren't doing your job. Yeah. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies merch store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies 
or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. But they figure out that <laughs> that Judge Brewer uh, died via via IV drugs. So they figure it's somebody who had experience giving IVs. So that wouldn't be Chris. No, so no but idea. that was truthful in that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so also we have Kim that we also, we have Reba's character. Kim gives Eileen a job as the assistant now. Yeah. Yeah. Which is nice. <laughs> yeah, that was nice. And I, I think that like, again, it felt like pilot. It, yeah, you know, absolutely. Laying out your characters. And another thing I liked about this movie was the varied looks in the whole entire cast. Like everybody mm-hmm. like wasn't too glammed up. They looked yeah. normal. It was diverse somewhat, but yeah. it was also diverse in, in, in the look of people. Mm-hmm. You know, people were all different shapes and whatever. So it felt more realistic, like a, an actual town. Yeah. Where nobody looked like, you know, they were glamorous and wore makeup to bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so then she sentenced... Bart's son, Dirk, I think is the name, Dirk, uh, to do some time, make amends. And his mom, what Charlene, I think, uh, is very upset about it. She Karen's out. Yes, she does. You're going to regret this. Probably not a <laughs> smart thing to say to a judge. No, it's like, okay. I mean, I'm pretty sure you could go to prison just for that. For threatening oh, yeah. a judge, that's illegal. You can't do that. <laughs> Uh, and uh but dirk he wants to make up for his mistakes and uh so she goes and she asks to look at this hotel footage the night judge brewer died uh and then we find out that vance was an iv drug user uh and uh that the judge was drugged by vance and we get this long scene where Vance, at first she's she thinks he's going to help her, and then he pulls a gun on her. And uh, that was it was a pretty good, it I think a good tense scene. Yeah. At yeah. first I was a little confused on that because I was like, did he actually drug her when she was drinking the soda? I thought mm-hmm. she might have caught on that it was him by that point, and that she was fake and she faked like. Oh yeah, but I, I mean, I kind of wondered that too because it's like, why would he have her drive? Yeah, because she never and, passed out and through the whole entire scuttle. She mm-hmm. never passed out if yeah. she was given drugs to pass out. But it seemed so like was she tent. was though a little bit affected, though. I think so. Yeah, so I don't know. She, uh, she might have been drugged. She might have been faking. I don't so know. Weird. Like he was gonna like she was gonna crash the car and he was gonna be right in there mm-hmm. if she had passed out. Yeah, and we find out that uh, that Vance is in love with Charlene, uh, and this is why he, you know, did what he did, I guess. Uh, yeah. And so she crashes. She duped in- him. Yeah, yeah, she used him, and uh, she uh, crashes into the hay, and uh, and then. Oh, and I then- laughed because that was digital smoke. Oh yeah. I had such a good chuckle over that more than I should have, <laughs> to be honest. I shouldn't have laughed so hard, but it was the middle of the night and I was just, I busted out. I was yeah. like, I don't care who I wake up, but it was hysterical <laughs> to me. Yeah. But nobody knows that there she's with Vance. Nobody knows the Vance is villain. So it is pretty tense. I would say. Yeah. Uh, it did a, a good job and good standoff. Yeah. And she shoots him in the shoulder and with her mama's gun (laughs) and she just shot him in the knee (laughs) yeah (laughs) good enough though she was drugged (laughs) yeah and so bart tracks her bumper and figures it out crazy that she forgives him for that too yeah to put a tracking device on her and he doesn't get in trouble crazy yeah but uh but then charlene gets arrested chris is freed and uh, and then they have this karaoke scene at the end, which of course is hilarious because you've got you know Reba. <laughs> she's drunk too. 
Yeah. Ship there drunk and singing. <laughs> and uh, I forget who it was who's singing, but she's like, what did that poor song do to her? <laughs> oh, that was so, I think was that it was Jill Morrison's character. Yeah. Oh yeah. The, the secretary. The other secretary. It was so the other yeah. Sister. Yeah. Did you uh, figure out that she had early on that she might've been having an affair with that judge? Cause I thought that was obvious from like the first, her first scene, the way she reacted to the, to the dead, the dead judge judge and mm. how she was emotional over it. I was yeah. like, it's going to come out that they were together. Yeah. I thought that that was very obvious. Yeah. I could see that. I could see that. Uh, it seemed like the judge, judge Brewer got around a lot. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. He was busy. Meanwhile, his patient wife is at home. Yes. You know, <laughs> Uh, yeah, Mrs. Ugh. Brewer. Uh, but uh, she didn't look like she was that sorry. She was like, finally, you know, when she was picking up his stuff. No. And I was like, did we ever give her the box? Because when she's cleaning out his office, she's putting all those girly magazines in there. Uh-huh. And she's like, did she give that man's wife all those girly magazines? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. And, <laughs> and then she says, I think it's to Chris, she says, maybe you should try being a good girl for a change. Uh, and then you end with, there's a whole a new I don't know if this is a new song or a, a an old song I don't know I never heard it before a girl's night out it's called and I don't know if yeah that's, I'm, I'm not familiar with it yeah I had never heard it so they they end singing it and uh and so yeah I really would be very very surprised if we at the if not if we get a series or at least another movie in the next like six months or something i'm totally thinking this movie because she also told that judge guy when he called her missy and she said you were supposed to you don't remember me you were supposed to protect me as a kid and you Uh failed me you know and i was like yeah he's one of those old type of guys you know like always blaming the woman right maybe you should try being a good girl for a change right that was heartbreaking and all too too true because we all live through we all know some man like that mm-hmm. unfortunately but yeah. um but there's definitely there's got to be more i wouldn't be surprised like you said before the end of the year we get another movie for this mm-hmm. yeah yeah so what would you get, i think Bates? reba should keep doing lifetime movies because they I all seem so, to be too. good yeah 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 and i mean got, they got a great cast and yeah. uh uh, it's an interest. It's a fun idea, and I don't feel like I'm surprised anything... she didn't do another Christmas movie with them either. This yeah, year. that's true. I, I, uh, I don't feel like there's anything else quite like this right now on air. No. I mean, I'm not like keeping up with all of the legal dramas uh, that are out there, but, uh, but I don't know. I don't think there's anything with this much sass and quite like no. this female led right now. True. It's got yeah. a little bit of everything yeah so what would you give this one one to one to five um uh, what would you give, give this three solid stars yeah i was it, i was yeah. entertained by it i might give it like yeah. a 3.5 uh i was entertained by it i liked the characters it is a little tonally kind of a mess yeah but uh but it, but I it's left, fun but it was fun yeah 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 it was a good even start. though it was even though there were some parts of this movie where you're like, whoo, you know, it's <laughs> tough. It was still a fun watch, regardless of that. You know, they they had a good blend. Yeah. yeah. And I, even though some, like we said, especially her, like literally punching a guy with her gavel <laughs> is absolutely ridiculous. It was fun, ridiculous. It was, re- it was entertaining. Uh, she be, and ridiculous. she became a meme. Like, yeah, it really uh. should. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and they sort of projected that video when she's watching on the phone. So like, uh, we oh, know yeah. what she's watching. And I was like, was that necessary? <laughs> I guess I'm too old. I can't stand mm-hmm. when they put the screens in with the text and stuff. Cause I got to read that now. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and when they do all that stuff and now they're projecting that and I'm like, Oh, I'm too old for this. Um, <laughs> like to pay attention to so much stuff on the screen. <laughs> yeah. But it was, yeah. It was ridiculous. Very memorable. And I, I mean, that's why she gets the hammer. I just thought it was because she was a judge. Right. (laughs) She literally hammers her. uh... (laughs) You know, that guy lost some teeth because she hit him hard. Yes, she did. (laughs) 
Well, let us know if you're listening, what you think of the hammer. If you enjoyed it, uh, like we did, uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts and whether, let us know whether you think they should do a series or do a, do movies, uh, either way. I think it, it, uh, um, it would be a lot of fun to get to see more and I, it would just be fun to kind of see more cases and, um, yeah. And they yeah. need the ratings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nice change of pace for them too, mm-hmm. because they do those thrillers, those women in peril thrillers. And then they do those ripped from the headline and they don't do as many like dramas or, mm-hmm. like, or dramedies like this movie was anymore. Yeah. And this, you know, gives it a more diverse form yeah. of entertainment. Yeah. Yep. So let us know what you think. Uh, if you're listening, we would uh, love to hear your thoughts. And uh, and uh, Terry, how can people follow you uh, on Twitter and all that fun stuff? Uh, I'm on Twitter at Flurry Heaven. That's basically where I am mostly. Uh, complaining about <laughs> stupid things. <laughs> and we also had you on to recap the Waltons movie, which was so good. Talk about different. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed they do that Easter movie. I know. I hope so, so much. Oh, oh. I wonder oh. if Hallmark could pick that up. No, I, probably it, not. It feels perfect for Hallmark. It feels perfect because I, I was really thinking they need another like period show when When Calls to Heart ends because that's yeah. going on 10 years. That can't yeah. keep going on forever. Yeah. It'd be a perfect yeah. fit, but. It would. It really would. But, uh, but yeah, you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. Check that out. Also, make sure you're following the podcast, the Hallmarkies Pod and Hallmarkies Podcast. And we are back on Facebook. It was so exciting. <laughs> I didn't think that we'd ever get it fixed, but it did. And so you can follow us now again on Facebook. Uh, so that's exciting. And uh, please, if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really helps us a lot. And if you are listening on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group, which is really fun uh, way to get to talk about shows like this uh, in our patron group. And uh, we have lots of other great benefits from becoming a patron. And we have a merch store where you can get fun, festive designs and everything for Hallmarky, Hardy, Postable, anybody in your life that loves these, these movies, <laughs> please check it out. And uh, thanks so much, Terry. This was a lot of fun to talk about. This was fun too. <laughs> Thank <hammer>. you, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>